Here on the Black Sea, near the city of Yalta in the Crimea, is the meeting place of the leaders of Britain, Russia, and the United States, scene of the most successful international conference of the war. Libadia Castle, once the summer palace of Tsar Nicholas II. Here the Crimea conference is to take place, and the surrounding countryside is busy with preparations. Military convoys bring necessary supplies. Special communications lines are strung to the palace. Under three flags at a nearby airfield, Russian officials headed by Foreign Secretary Molotov await the arrival of the British and American delegations. Anthony Eden, British Foreign Minister. Edward Statinius, United States Secretary of State. Harry Hopkins, advisor to President Roosevelt, with Averill Harriman, United States Ambassador to Russia. Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of Great Britain. Also arriving by plane after a 6,000 mile trip is Franklin D. Roosevelt. President of the United States. of eight days of day and night conferences at Labadia Castle begins with the arrival of distinguished participants. Sarah Churchill Oliver, accompanying her father, greets President Roosevelt's daughter, Mrs. Anna Bodiger. Marshal Joseph Stalin, Premier of the Soviet Union. At the time of the first three-nation conference at Tehran 14 months ago, the ground over which Stalin now walks was still in the enemy's hands. The three parties reach a firm accord on military and political points. Coordinated plans are made for great new blows against Germany from all directions. Reaffirming the resolve of the United Nations to cooperate fully after the war, Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin reach agreement on the foundations of European peace. Germany shall be disarmed. German militarism and Nazism will be destroyed. Germany shall be occupied in zones, with France a major participant. An organization for world security will be permanently established. The three leaders reaffirm their faith in the principles of the Atlantic Charter. Moving 
outside, Sarah Oliver, Catherine Harriman, daughter of the American ambassador, and Mrs. Bottiger watch as the three leaders briefly interrupt their conference to pose for history-making pictures. Says the special communique signed by all three. Our meeting here in the Crimea has reaffirmed our common determination to maintain and strengthen in the peace to come that unity of purpose and of action which has made victory possible and certain for the United Nations in this war. We believe that this is a sacred obligation which our governments owe to our peoples and to all peoples of the world. Winston Churchill, Franklin Roosevelt, Joseph Stalin, Thank you.